Good morning. Morning. How are you doing? Are you on Pretty the good. you on the East Coast, Erica? I forgot. I'm on the West Coast. Oh, okay, great. So you're safe from <laughs> from any hurricanes and whatnot. Yeah, we have it easy on the West Coast. Oh, we just we we just have heat and you know firestorms and earthquakes. Yep. And early meetings. <laughs> and early meetings. Just getting off one with Israel stuff. <laughs> Oh, wow. That's very early. I don't actually see anything on our agenda. Let me make a new section here. I think we, I mean, I think we obviously will, um, assuming Jim will join, we obviously kind of have the ongoing, where are we with all things uh, custom resource definition? Right. <laughs> And then, and I'm a little tardy on, on putting some, I think I have a issue to put in there from the OPA folks. Um, yeah, that's about all. I, <laughs> I'm working with custodian on the, and Kapil usually joins these calls, so he might be on. I'm working with Kapil and the custodian project on their SIG security assessment. So you know, I, I will definitely put the bug in his ear about, you know, how we could integrate with the CR. Um, yeah, so that I think, you know, if we can get, we get OPA, we get custodian with Caverno, and then I think there were a couple others that were in the IBM folks. I think that'll be, that'll be a pretty good proof point. At least we'll find, at that point, see if we got enough for traction or, I did have one other agenda topic, um, not so concrete as a uh, discussion, but uh, as I'm doing a lot more with uh, NIST 853 policies, I wanted to talk about how those might map to both the CR and then more generally Kubernetes. Cool, add something to the agenda if you'd like. Yes. Uh, Jim says he can't make it. Okay. We'll see if some of the IBM folks join. Uh, have sure. Sure. Just wait a couple more minutes. Otherwise, maybe we'll just have a short, small one. And maybe not meriting a full agenda item, but any... Um, update from Howard on his slides he's trying to put together and uh, we recorded it last week and submitted it so Great. should be good yeah I'm not sure how <laughs> what kind of reception or audience we'll get we'll see <laughs> The idea there was it was just going to be a, a recorded presentation for yeah next time, right? Thanks for helping out with slides. Ah, uh, I wish I I could have dedicated more time. <laughs> it's been it's been crazy busy. So oh, it looks like we got a small meeting today. Maybe everyone's busy, either that or it is August, so can't necessarily count on too many Europeans showing up. Um, let's see. Do we have any open poll requests that we need to address or any other kind of administrative business? I think I'm still, every time I get on this call, I put a note to myself that I still think I'm not 
a contributor yet on the GitHub repo. So I think I need to do something. Jim mentioned I have to do something, but that's really not for the group, but just for me. Yeah. <laughs> then I can do helpful things like review PRs and commit things. It says you're not a member of the Kubernetes SIGs org. I submitted some some issues and filled out some some PRs and committed things and someone looked at something, but I, I am I'm definitely on on the far end of the spectrum of making sure I get all those I's dotted and T's crossed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so then, let's see. You want to just go ahead? Oh, we have some more people. Welcome, everyone. Hi, Erika. Hi, everyone. Maybe, Robert, did you want to start with your item if we don't have? Yeah, sure. I mean, uh, I mean, again, it's not really at the level of a formal presentation or discussion, just more throwing something out there. And uh, anyone who has brainstorm suggestions or you know, further ideas would be appreciated. But uh, I'm involved in a number of uh, initiatives and projects. We're looking at NIST 853 controls, and that relates to something called FedRAMP in the government federal space. And then there's some automation around that called OSCAL uh, that NIST has released and essentially a, you know, XML adjacent structure for your uh, controls and assets, components, they call them. Uh, but one of the components, of course, could be a policy, either written or codified. Um, so I was just, A, just curious if anyone else has kind of looked at the federal NIST policy control space, and in particular, around Kubernetes. Um, but then just more broadly, as it maybe relates to the custom resource for policy results, policy execution results, um, you know, how that might map or not to, to some, to a framework like OSCAL. You've, you're trying to automate the category, the definition, categorization and, and implementation of, of controls and policies being one of those types of controls, um, both again, written and computer executable policy. So that's, that's the broad strokes. Just curious if anybody has, has any overlap with those areas. Yeah, this is Jaya. So maybe I can chime in a little bit here and then I think I see Jacob is on the call here. Um, so, on the advanced cluster management uh, side, um, with on the Red Hat uh, offering product offering as well as the open cluster management community project, um, we are um, building out a library of policies um, and we are organizing them based on the NIST 853 standard. And uh, so, definitely, you know, we are looking at um, in that context, right? Uh, we are looking at it. Um, and uh, there is also an effort that's going on. I, I guess see Kirsten is on the call as well. Both Kirsten and Jacob uh, can talk a little bit about uh, work that is going on in the OpenShift, Red Hat OpenShift product area related to uh, FISMA slash FedRAMP uh, controls and uh, in the context of the compliance as code project. So those are the two things that are happening on the Red Hat side that are related to what you're talking about, Robert. And is there anything that's uh, so? Is, is all of that kind of on the on the repo and published, or is that? Yeah. Kind of so, uh, can I share for one second? Sure, absolutely. And I'll show you what we have. So let me. I can show you what we're doing on the is open cluster management. Okay. Can you uh, see my screen? There it is. Yes, perfect. 
Okay, so in the open cluster management community project, uh, we have a repo called policy collection. And um, so in this collection, what our goal here is to uh, come up with a set of ex policy examples for open cluster management. And uh, the way we have organized the repo structure is we have a stable folder and we have a community folder. The stable folder is, um, it contains um, policies that uh, ship as part of the open, uh, as part of our product offering, which is uh, Red Hat Advanced Cluster Management for Kubernetes. So <clears throat> here also, again, we are organizing the policies in terms of the various Nest 800 53 controls, version four. And uh, so the policies are outlined here, right? So if you yep, click yep. on one of the policies, it's in a YAML format, and then it kind of walks through how, how it is organized. We are also uh, working with various uh, contributors outside of our uh, product space. Uh, so the, those policies are going into this community folder and we welcome contributions from everybody, right? Uh, this is open to the community. And uh, again, we are organizing this in terms of the NIST 853. And you can see here, we have a couple of policies donated by um, IBM Research. Uh, this is a policy that is uh, OPA related policy um, that is donated by um, one of the Red Hatters who is working in the consulting uh, ex client facing role. And uh, he also donated this other one as well. And then we are also working with uh, Sysdig and uh, they have created uh, policies for their Falco operator and the uh, Sysdig secure, right? So the idea here is that um, they will put in here the actual policy file. And then uh, obviously the policy has to be consumed, right? So you need a policy consumer and uh, that would be whatever is running on the actual cluster. And in this case, for the Falco, uh, they point to the Falco project. Uh, you can figure out how to deploy the Falco operator, for example, right? right. Um, right. So, so that's the whole idea, right? That uh, not all the code is within our uh, open cluster management uh, project, but um, the policies are here so that, um, and the policies can be also written in other languages, right? So for example, if you have written a policy in OPA, that's fine too. Right, because we have a way to wrap OPA and uh, ship it um, from Rackham, so we can do that. Um, so, uh, so the, the, I think the the part that I mean, this looks great, but I mean, I'm I mean, this definitely fits with what I was thinking is necessary. The the dots I'm trying to connect is you know you think going through these FedRAMP or other government uh, buyer processes. You, you can imagine, you know, we, we think in terms of actually running cloud infrastructure and, and doing DevOps and, you know, DevSecOps, you know, a lot of the receiving end of this information, you might want to think is doc ops, <laughs> documentation ops. So the, the idea of this OSCAL NIST project is to kind of script, well, first of all, define the, the model and the data structures and then script the production of documentation that can be consumed by humans. So the idea being, and it might be a small tweak um, to what you've already got here, I'll take a look. And it might also be something that I th we may have talked about on this custom resource, I, I can't remember. But this notion of just providing kind of a policy statement that's human readable, that it, that it gets carried along through all of these automated DevOps policies mm. or SecOps policies so that it can bubble up to you know, literally something that you know, a script that generates a PDF from JSON or YAML, and then includes those policy statements around you know, what the policy, what controls the policy is implementing, how it's implementing, who is implementing, you know, what roles are, are intersecting, and then how it's related to other policies. But at the end of the day, for the consumer of this being, say, a you know an analyst at the project management office or at you know, the Department of Energy, I'm just making this up, you know, they, will want, they won't want to see this, they'll want to see a PDF that says, you know, we have a, pol a certif policy certificate that satisfies you know, SC-8 and checks the following control elements is on it, following components. Yeah, is it fair, Robert, to, to say, like to think, especially for FedRAMP, we're talking, I, I'm thinking we want an automated 
output for a system security plan, for example. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and that's okay. what OSCAL, OSCAL as the basis for the control library rolls up into a, a I think it's a GSA group. Okay. Yeah, we should, we should definitely take a look at OSCAL and, and the Red Hat team, and we might have some people in our public sector team involved in that already. Um, so the compliance is code repo, which plays a, a role with open cluster um, management, right? The, the Rackham offering can uh, call into our, our compliance operator, which will run on an individual OpenShift or Kubernetes cluster. Um, Compliance as code is intentionally uh, written with SCAP because it is, you know, NIST certified, right? It's a NIST standard um, security content automation protocol. It's a pain in the butt if you ask me. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so, and, and I love that, you know, we have OPA, the ability through Rackham now to support OPA and things. But, but the compliance as code repo was kind of designed in a way to kind of be able to automatically generate the PDF that you're talking about. Um, but I think, I think it will be really interesting. And, and Jakob, you might want to chime in here because you're probably more familiar uh, with exactly how that's, how that's done in compliance as code. I, I think it'd be really interesting to also look at OSCAL and, and see, you know, you know, what do we, you know, is there alignment? Do we want to, you know, you know, where, where do we go from here? We've been doing compliance as code for a long time at Red Hat because of our, you know, strong um, public sector customer base. Um, but, but there may be an opportunity to kind of get to the same place, you know, collaboratively mm -hmm. with a, a, another project. So. Yeah, I yeah. think I agree. Um, I think uh, one, one thing I wanted to highlight is um, within the policies, uh, right? One of the, can you guys hear me? Yes, sorry. I was just noticing that Jakob put in chat that there's an OSCAL repo in compliance as code. And he yeah, put a, put I was hoping that, that he can share. Uh, the repo is very new. Um, I know that OSCAL was yeah, in, the, in the compliance as code team or the project. was It was sort of contentious topic at some point. Um, but apparently there's been some development. And I'm sort of removed from these details of the compliance as code repo. Um, we can ask, but I don't know the details uh, offhand. Uh, nonetheless, there is a repo that generates some OSCAL data from uh, the uh, SCAP content, it appears. The repo is what? It's like three, four months old. So it's a fairly new project. Okay. Um, I can try asking what's the status and if you know if this is just a proof of concept or if they want to go somewhere. With yeah, let's let's do that. And and Jakob, we might. I can also ask uh, John Osborne a little bit. He's he's working with um, yeah DoD on some things related things. And it'd be just as valuable to understand. You know, if if someone has looked at you know Oscal and had you know the pros and cons way and decided to you know in the negative. And then you know, hear the reasons. That that would be you know great to surface as well. Cool. But uh, yeah, I mean, this, this is. It looks like they've got some approximation of what what I was thinking in terms of you know being able to do you know bottoms up or tops down to yeah. you know from a, a, an organization trying to engage and produce the SSP. You know, if they have everything. With their Kubernetes policies defined in OPA or, or YAML or JSON, and yeah, and up to, to a yeah. same same on our side too, right? If there's feedback on the compliance as code repo and how it's structured or organized, you know, or or any other type of feedback, we we'd love to get that um, as well. So, kind of, you know, the more alignment we can create, the better. I, I think I can provide some concrete uh, fire kicking. <laughs> <laughs> Great. And, and I will mention one of the things that the, the team at Red Hat who's been working on um, the compliance operator for OpenShift has, has needed to do for SCAP is uh, add the capability to do YAML probes. So 
there's been work upstream as well on that. Okay, uh, Jaya, was there something you were trying to, to get a word in on? Did we lose Jaya? You're on mute, Jaya. No, I'm here. Um, okay. Yeah, I think that those are all good points. Um, I think what I was trying to say is that uh, I understand what Robert is asking. And um, uh, one of the things we are attempting to do, if you go and look in the YAML file, that's what I was trying to highlight is put some annotations into the file that uh, corresponds to, you know, what standard it is, what are the control uh, families and the control themselves, right? Um, so the idea there then is we can then use uh, map the technical controls or the technical policies, right? Or the policies for the technical controls to the uh, higher level policies, right? Uh, which is what you see in, uh, in uh, standards like FISMA, et cetera, right? So I think uh, that's at least the goal, right? To kind of bridge that. Yeah, absolutely. No, I mean, it makes perfect sense. And, and the, especially in the context of larger orgs who, you know, it's like they've, they've, they've achieved or have already man, a mandate to achieve uh, an ATO. And so they're, yeah, they're kind of going through that more mechanical exercise of, we know what our processes and policies are at a written level, right? Now we're mapping that to the, the NIST 853 control families. And then what does that mean for Kubernetes or, or any container environment, right? Um, and then kind of doing that analysis, gap analysis, and then just mapping exercise. Um, I, yeah, I, so I'm showing that example here. If you see here, right, in this particular policy, this is related to the certificate expiration. So we have these three annotations that kind of um, say where it fits in, and you can actually uh, add multiple annotations here. So you can say in this data and 53, but you can also say PCI. So for example, if you're in the financial sector and you care about both, right, you can put a comma and add that as well. Right. So then what happens is uh, when the policy violation gets reported back to the hub, um, on the hub, you will actually see these organized in terms of the standards, so. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, the other, the other challenge is, you know, even <laughs> amazingly for an initiative like FedRAMP, which was designed around cloud, it was still, I think the, the operating concept was around static resources, static assets. And so, you know, the reality of course is that this is all ephemeral in, in the container and certainly the Kubernetes world. So, you know, having, a, having an SSP that talks about you know, a particular policy around a particular set of IP addresses or assets or even interfaces um, you know, quickly becomes pointless if you then have a, you know, a, a Kubernetes set of clusters where you're constantly changing you know, not only the IP addresses, of course, but the workloads and the, the microservices and whatnot. So being able to, to move that, I, I see the value, not just in the box checking I've got to produce this documentation for the federal government and view it every year, but the, the real operational need to, to keep bi-directional sync of what I'm saying my policy controls are trying to accomplish, tracing that all the way down to the nitty gritty of like, are my pods in compliance and here's how, and then back again, right? Yep. And that's why it's, it's like so important that you be able to kind of automatically, you know, scan for regular compliance and output kind of that, that SSP as, as part of the, you know, an output and audit report too, that is human readable, right? Right, right. You, yeah. You've got to marshal all that change operationally, but then you've got to communicate that change and that the change is under control uh, to, to that human who ultimately has to sign on the other line and says, yes, this is in compliance or not. Yep. And do you know, it, and I feel like I should have known about OSCAL, but I'm, I'm catching up. Does anybody know whether it's intended to replace SCAP since it's a NIST sponsored project? I don't know. I don't think so. I think it's. I don't think so. I thought uh, Alskal is at a higher level. At least that's okay. my understanding. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would be my interpretation as well. I, I, would, I would think that they would see it as complementary. Okay. Yeah. Um, before we run out of time, uh, I think uh, I don't see Jim on the call today, but I was just curious, Erica, whether you had a view of uh, the policy report CR, where that stood, and um, how can we get to a point where we can um, get that uh, kind of standardized? Yeah, Jim said he couldn't make it today. Um, that in the Slack, he says plan for the week is to transfer all the pending comments from the Google Doc to GitHub, that they have all added a report generator in the multi-tenancy benchmarks project, and they're working in Caverno for adding um, support. Does that address your needs? Are there other things we need to do to get it moving forward besides um, addressing what were comments in the doc within the repo? Yeah, the only other thing is, um, I know you and Jim took it to the SIG auth, right? Um, so what happened yeah. there? Do we have to do anything more there? Or is it just now we are going to just um, move forward by uh, in the context of the GitHub report itself, right? Where we uh, take additional comments and uh, PRs. Yeah. Yeah, SIG auth, um, what we understood is they're pretty has it, if the, you know, like the repo we have works well and we can, you know, and projects are able to use that, they prefer just keeping within that repo. The, you know, official API getting like compiled into Client Go as a series of kind of recommendation or re not recommendations, but uh, requirements and work that you have to kind of meet. I can share if you'd like. Uh, and so they're much more hesitant to do that if possible. For instance, okay. we would probably have to refactor it to be in the more common spec and status since they uh, kind of format, which we didn't use, uh, things like that. So I think ideally, especially for what would be considered like alpha, if we projects can refer and collaborate around the repo we have, that would be the best point. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Um, because I know one of my colleagues, Randy George had some comments. So uh, I'll, I'll ask him to work in the context of the GitHub repo then. That sounds good. Thanks. Yeah, that'd be perfect. Yeah, please open issues, PRs, whatever. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, sounds good. Thank you, Erica. Sure. Yeah, then I had the only other thing I was just uh, Howard and I recorded deep dive for KubeCon EU. I don't know when that is, but look out for that. Hopefully we didn't misrepresent this project, uh, these projects too well. And mm. did the job. <laughs> if, if you mentioned the formal verification, <laughs> we, we misrepresented that, that anyone is working on that. But <laughs> I think we uh, represented it as a uh, plea for volunteers. <laughs> that is an accurate representation. Excellent. Uh, yeah. It really, I, it's cool because uh, since Howard has been away so long and he's coming back and looking at all this and like a crazy amount of <laughs> things going on. So many projects in the policy space sprung up and so it's quite, it's, from that outside perspective, you get to see more uh, that there has been a, a spur of movement in the space. All right. Am I missing anything else on the agenda? Does anyone have anything that they would like to bring up? Give them once, twice. Nope. All right. Looks like we can end early. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you in uh, two.
two weeks or on Slack and through GitHub. Thank you, Erika. Thank you Thanks. all. Bye. Thanks. Bye.